Increase in industrialization, technology, and overpopulation have led to a changing environmental balance between humans and our environment. One of the best examples of these changes can be seen in marine life. Humans have caused physiological and behavioral changes in marine life populations. These changes can come full circle and cause effects in our lives as well. The relationship between human behavior and marine life is troublesome. We need to find a good balance, and education can help us do that. Since millions depend on the ocean for a large portion of their diet and income, this automatically results in thousands of marine creatures being captured daily to meet the increasing demand. In a study done by Martin Schaefer, Steve Carpenter, and Brad Young, the marine ecosystem off the Canadian East Coast was examined after overfishing led to the elimination of a certain large predatory fish the hearing. The hearing is a vital prey species for the cod. Therefore, when hearings are overfished, the cod population suffers as well. And this has a chain reaction on other species too. The depletion of a single species showed profound cascading effects on the entire food web in the coral reefs and kelp forests, further justifying the negative physical effects overfishing has on marine life. Changes we've seen in marine life have been very pronounced, but the effects that humans have on marine life exceeds more than simply physical effects. While a certain dose may kill an animal, could be banned from industrial chemical use, chemicals that do not kill animals may still play a significant role in affecting that animal. In a study conducted by Ward et al., we can see how chemicals and pollutants can affect the behavior of marine life on a psychological level in addition to the previously seen physiological level. For many animals, Chemicals play a key role in environmental behavioral response. In addition to the composition of the water in which they reside, which also affects their visual and olfactory systems. Changing the composition of their environment not only affects the animal, but affects their social behavior, the way they interact with members of their species and of other marine species. The study by Ward et al. looked at the effects of 4MP, a common industrial chemical, on banded killifish animal that is commonly found in many northern american lakes these fish were selected in the study because they exhibit shoaling behavior which means that they stay together in large clusters for social reasons often referred to as schools of fish this shoaling behavior is beneficial for these animals as it provides defense against predators foraging benefits and higher rates of mate pair the experimenters obtained 120 of these fish from morris lake in canada they were then divided into 20 large groups of six and placed in an aquarium made to emulate their natural environment the groups of fish exposed to one microgram of 4MP had significantly greater mean distances from their closest neighbor than the vehicle control groups. This impact without a doubt plays a role in the fitness of the animal which could have long-standing implications on the species and in the ecosystem in which it resides. Our effects on marine life impact more than just the environment. Ralph F. Keeling of UCSD's Scripps Institution of Oceanography through multiple research articles from the past 20 years suggests that our impact on the environment have come back to drastically affect the planet in which we live in, affecting our own well-being as a result. The most prominent of these impacts is ocean deoxygenization, which Dr. Keeling defines as the loss of oxygen from the oceans as a result of climate change. More than half of the world's oxygen supply is produced from phytoplankton in the ocean. Keeling's research has found that over the last 50 years, there has been a 2% loss, which seems like a marginal effect for now. As it exponentially increases, it will lead to lethal changes of our planet. According to Keeling and other scientists, humans have lowered oxygen levels in three ways. The first is warming effects. As surface waters warm from our caused climate change, though, the ocean absorbs the heat and loses its ability to hold oxygen, leading to a mass decline. The decline causes biological demands affecting metabolic rates and requiring a larger demand of oxygen, further depleting oxygen resources in the ocean. Second, humans' impact on ocean circulation and its slowing have increased the upwelling from oxygen-poor deep waters added to the loss of oxygen. The third which connects them is known as layered wa water columns. With ocean surface waters being heated and the influx of fresh water from rivers, nutrient runoffs, and melting ice, the ocean's waters have been broken up between levels of oxygen as well as density. For the majority of anaerobic marine life, this results in an overcrowded competition for the same oxygen-rich resources and territories. This leads to a loss of marine life and reduction in diversity, growth, survival, reproduction, immunity, and even sight, which together decrease the effectiveness in fighting pollution. At a microorganism level, nutrient overflow causes chemical changes to occur. 
Marine life adapt at the expense of more oxygen use in more oxygen dead zones. This results from the, the microorganisms' inability to recycle all the dead organic material or their inability to decompose inorganic human pollution. Keeling predicts this will directly impact the mortality of marine life as a whole. Ultimately, the disruptions of the marine ecosystem will lead to the releasing of hazardous gas such as methane and nitrous oxide into our atmosphere. It will also reduce the number of resources we rely on daily like food, medicine, transportation, air quality and quantity, climate control, and even a large portion of the world's economy. As the projected loss of oxygen is set to increase exponentially according to Keeling, our only solution is to reduce the loss of oxygen from climate change. This can be done by reducing global warming, which is most important, greenhouse gases, use of fossil fuels and overfishing, as well as improving the efficiency of fertilizers and the removal of our own waste. In closing, helping the environment shouldn't be thought of as an act of charity, but as a necessity. I hope our research has helped you understand the connection between humans and our marine environment. Our actions and behaviors can be mutually beneficial to marine life as well as our own lives with a little effort and some good education. Thanks for watching.